it, uh, that that actually brings up something to my mind. I was thinking about this today. You know, <laughs> I don't I don't mind it. I don't mind like you know saying this person's a goat, that person's a goat in UFC. But also at the same time, I think we should kind of just be like, well, they're one of the best, just because the UFC hasn't been around for that long. You know. I mean, if you think about it, it's like, oh, they're the greatest ever. Well, it's like, well, the ever is like 25, 30 years. <laughs> it's like the sport has not been along for that. I mean, if we're talking the greatest ever football player running back, well, football's been around for a long time. If we're talking about the GOAT, you know, pitcher, you know, for baseball, baseball's been around for a long, long time. And that, to me, I get it. Uh, I mean, we don't have enough examples, you know. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like we just – he is one of the greatest. I don't know if he's the greatest of all time because in 10 years, there could be some ridiculous monster that comes along and then we're like, well, man, Stipe would have gotten chewed up and spit out, you know? Just an interesting little sidebar I had. I was thinking about that today. I'm like, ah, oh, man, because everyone's so quick to throw around, oh, the goat, the goat, the goat, the goat. Well, you know, okay, Kobe, he's one of the greatest, you know? Uh, Jordan, one of the great, that, you know, you can't argue that. But again, basketball has been around for a long, long time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how you feel on that, but that's just. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. As a fan, I think those conversations are always going to pop up. Um, I mean, it's really. I know, would just rather about people a... say, uh, sorry, I, I just, I would just rather hear people say, including us. Well, up to this point, he's the greatest that we've seen at heavyweight. You know, or up to this point in the UFC's short history as, in a, as a whole, you know, DC has been one of the most dominant, one of the most decorated, one of the most well-respected, well-rounded, whatever that we have seen thus far, rather than being like, oh, well, he's the greatest of all time. Well, all time for you guys is not really a long time, you know? Yeah, but I mean, it's still all time that the sport has been around. It's not <laughs> yeah. like you could say, oh, he's going to be better than everybody that comes into the future. Like, what? Like, <laughs> who would even try to make that argument? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I just, like I said, may, maybe it's just me nitpicking, and I was just getting annoyed with it earlier because I kept on listening to things. And even Dana was like, oh, he's the GOAT. Well, also, Steve Pace the GOAT. Well, it's like, well, what? And John Jones is the GOAT. It's like, what? <laughs> I mean, I know they're different divisions, <laughs> but I'm just like, I think we're throwing around this term a little loosely here, you know? Uh, I, I mean, I, I definitely can agree that there's some, you know, loose lips thrown around the goat status. And a lot of people like to say that they're a goat, but I think clearly Stipe Miocic is the best heavyweight, the most well-rounded heavyweight that the UFC has ever had. Yes. Um, yes, absolutely. And when, when you talk about pound for pound goat, that's a conversation I'm a lot less interested in because you're going to need these hypotheticals and, you know, somebody might say it's yeah. Jones or somebody might say it's Henry Cejudo or, or Khabib or something. It's like, uh, I, I don't see a whole lot of value in making those kind of comparisons. Yeah. Um, definitely. Especially not Henry Cejudo. Don't get me started on that. Um, <laughs> he was extra mouthy after last night. <laughs> was he? What was he? Oh, about oh, yeah. um, Ali? Oh, big time, big time. But I mean, rightfully so. There, there was a few others that they came in there and were just ripping O'Malley. And it was fighters. Uh, God, I, I wish I would have screenshot. You know what? I might have screenshotted it. Actually, I believe I did. I believe I did. I, I, I planned ahead. Yes, I did. Henry, Henry Cejudo, I fought DJ and Marlon with no legs, <laughs> which is just funny. It's just funny hearing that. These two pump chump. Or no, this two pump chump broke his nail and can't compete. Hashtag levels. <laughs> he said he broke a nail. He could. Go. And then uh, Cody Dana No Fringe. Love, Cody No Love, just simply said some people aren't made for war. Hashtag sugar free. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good stuff right there classic yeah yeah <laughs> i love seeing cody yeah. get the title shot at 125 dropping down there curious to see how he looks but yeah you know when you talk about cejudo like i think he's so overrated man like okay so he beats D demetrius johnson in their rematch which a lot of people say he didn't win that fight i don't agree with that i do think he won that fight mm -hmm. um 
you know, he didn't dominate, but I thought he clearly won at least three rounds. Um, and then, I mean, did he ever even – he defended the one the 125 belt against TJ Dillashaw. Dillashaw looked super depleted in that fight coming down. Already being tiny at 135, you know, it looked like a strong breeze could have taken Dillashaw out that fight. <laughs> so he only defends the belt once. He's got – so two championship wins at 125. Moves up to 135 for a vacated title against Marlon Marais. Marais just looked like the moment was too big for him at that point. Uh, he looked good in the first round, and then he just looked like a deer in headlights from the second round on. I've never been super impressed with that guy. And then his one defense at 135 was against Dominic Cruz, who hadn't fought in years, and really, in my eyes, had, hadn't done anything to deserve a title shot coming back. It's not like he had come mm-hmm. back and won a couple of fights and proven that he was – you know, there's another guy that's got durability issues. But Cejudo, for some people to call him, to ha- even for me to even put Cejudo in the GOAT conversation is comical. Um, he, d- he does not want any part of Piotr Jan. Uh, absolutely would, not. Absolutely, absolutely not. not. And yeah. he was doing everything to dodge Jan. And, I mean, I think that's why he walked out. He doesn't, he doesn't want to defend against that murderer's row at 135, man. Not saying that all of those guys could beat him. I'd love to see Sterling fight uh, Cejudo. Mm-hmm. I think his style matches up really well against him. But <laughs> here, I'm fired up, man. Cejudo pisses me <laughs> off, man. You know, I'll say this about Cejudo. Uh, and you're probably going to like it. Um, as far as, because, you know, I mean, yeah, he's got the two belts or whatever. You know, he retired, you know, on top and all that. You know, hey, man, good for you. Great for you. It sound, sounds like he got a lot of very um, favorable matchups at very favorable times. Yes. Uh, for sure. And honestly, <laughs> yeah, if anyone were ever to say that he is one of the greatest I, I, if I was, if I was drinking a drink, I would spit it up and, and I would just, <laughs> I would just start laughing. I, I, and this is, this is, this is, I'm not even trying to knock. I'm being dead honest. I didn't know who Henry Cejudo was a year and a half ago. Seriously? I never heard of the guy. I didn't know who he was. And I'm all like, or I would see his name and just be completely not interested in ever watching the guy fight. And now so I've I remember, seen his fights, but I, I remember watching his first fight when he came in. You know, he's got this huge rep coming over as an Olympic champion, gold medal wrestler. Mm-hmm. So you know, wrestling's a great base to have in MMA. I remember his first title shot against Demetrius. You know, his striking was nowhere near there yet. That was, I believe, his only loss in his MMA career. Surprisingly, wins the rematch against Demetrius. I mean, he he ran through most of the guys that he fought. Um, oh, no, no, no. He lost to uh, Joe Benavidez back in the day. Hmm. And Benavidez was calling him out to defend his 125 belt. And that's when he ran up to 135. Like, dude, if you're running away from Benavidez, like, what are you doing? I, yeah. uh, I, I kind of lost some respect for him at that point to not try to go in and avenge that loss against Benavidez who is by no means a world beater. So like, what are you running away? I, I get that. He's not going to do anything for your name, but you want to, you want to avenge the losses you have on your record. Unless you just want to be a paper champ, which is kind of what I feel like he is, is just a paper champ. You know, he just got the right fight at, at right fights at the right time. And, you know, if you're a paper champ, well, why, you know, you're not, you're not interested in going back and avenging a loss because you're on to the next one, you know, because, a real champ, a real warrior, someone who had pride in, in, in all that. Yeah, they're gonna want to. They're gonna want to run it back with everybody that they lost against. If with ev- immediately, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, if it makes sense for them, obviously. But 